On today's episode, starting the new year off with an epic fail, what to do when your phone is a nudist, and my family's a drunk, now what? All that and more on today's episode of Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg. And I say hello in every episode. <laughs> so if you hate it, hit that 15 seconds first button. Um, with me, as always, is the most wanted man in all of Guam, oh, wow. Clark Roser. Hello. I'm really painting myself into a corner that I'm going to have some funny thing to say about you before I introduce you right. every time. Yeah. Like I'm turning it into a Simpsons chalkboard gag. Right. And exactly. I don't need that anxiety. Clearly, you've seen exactly what they went through in the first like three <laughs> weeks of the show. And they're like, wait a minute. This was a horrible idea okay and you just used the word exactly oh yes i did so uh which is fine for yeah, you yeah but in listening back to our episodes so yes. far i say exactly probably 45 times per episode uh, okay. i don't know when i'm saying it you know we're in conversation <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're shooting the shit or really thinking about you know, the questions. Yeah, and- I mean, for everyone out there listening, we really, we aren't scripted. We don't really know. Uh, LB, at least, doesn't really know a lot of the questions coming in. So it's not like we've had a lot of prep time. Yeah, we're just sitting down and we're both, you know, just doing our thing and doing the thing we do together. So, but I just heard it over and over. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on that. Right. Um, I'm, I'm officially going to try to move to precisely. Precisely. Indubitably. Precisely. <laughs> it's a, um, so anyway, your dear listener. <laughs> Do you love this show? Are you sick of hearing me say exactly? <laughs> Everyone say it at home. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's been good. It's been a good holiday season. As yeah, good as it I can mean, be. Exactly. As you good as it I can thought? be. I do this thing called Cameo. Oh, right. Or there's a thing called Cameo. You know right. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's this um thing where people can book me to send a personalized like video message to someone as a present. So I got a lot of, you know, you know, Tammy loved you on all that. And she's such a great friend. Will you wish her a Merry Christmas and that kind of stuff. So I got a bunch of those, which are really fun yeah, and really fun. And sometimes I do like old vital informations in it. Sometimes I'll say this is my favorite. So that has been a really nice thing to be like, reach out to people basically and say how much, you know, their brother, sister, whoever loves them and Merry Christmas or whatever. Yeah. For everyone out there listening, uh, you know, I've, I spent almost 40 years uh, being friends with LB, and uh, I have to say, after you got your fame, uh, you have always been very uh, uh, happy to talk to your fans. Yes, well, my fame. Your I fame. Like that. Yeah. Hey, man. Uh, whether we're at Disneyland or just walking down the street, if somebody comes up to you, as long as they say, they say your name, like they know who you are. Oh, that's right. That's, that's the great. rule. But the rule at Disneyland was there was horrible people at Disneyland. I never knew. I always feel like I know what it's like to be famous now because I've been at Disneyland with you. Yeah. Because that was, at a, especially at a certain point in time, really hard to do. We couldn't get through a line without people just yelling your name out or like they want to check to make sure it's you without yes. actually contacting well, and you. I just want to say a couple things. I'm not famous in that way where like someone's tearing at my garment. Like <laughs> you're I not, am not. You're not John Lennon. I would say that I'm you know what it is? I in reality I would say that I'm well known and well liked for the work I've done. To a 90s kid. Right. I am like, "Oh my goodness, yeah. famous." When I go do a smaller project cuz I do I get, you know, asked to do things and um 
I'm like, yeah, that sounds good based on, you know, you not having the creepiest email I've ever right, written, right. read and, you know, reading the script that you've written, you know, I'll go and do it. And there's always, not always, but oftentimes this like, hello, Miss Stenberg, Welcome, welcome to the set. We so appreciate you being here. Right. And I'm always like, do you need help moving chairs? <laughs> you know, and I really put, I, what I, I say to them a lot, I go, you're really overestimating how important I am. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just my, so I do try to, um, um, you know, I'm so happy to yeah. take pictures before the friggin' pandemic. And now I, I would get a lot of hugs. It feels like it's so cool because Cameo is kind of a way for you to uh, be able to do that with your fans uh, on like a global scale. Yeah. Instead it's of really it just cool. being the people that see you face to face. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. And it's a lot of. um you know, it's a lot of people that are saying how great my friend is. My friend is a doctor who's been working in the medical profession during oh, the pandemic. Wow. There's been a lot to, throughout the pandemic. There have been a lot of them that are like my friend's having a really hard time feeling isolated and alone. She could use a pep talk or a pick me up. Like wow. there's all different circumstances why people book me. Sure. And, and they're, you know, mostly really neat. Some only a few I turned down. Wow. You could turn cameos down. <laughs> oh yeah. You can turn them down. Oh, the first I one that. I ever turned down. I'm like, I don't know. Can I do that? But the first one I did, uh, turned down was this guy who wrote his request was, Hey, can you say which one of my books you like best? Oh no. Here's the link to them. And I'm like, nice try. Right. Now you're on the back of his book jacket. I right? know. It's like nice try. But, um, so there are people that want like, um, endorsements and stuff right. like that. And I'm like, I don't know what you're, first of all, <laughs> you're clever, but not that clever. Cause at the time I charged like 40 bucks and, um, I'm like, you're not, I'm not endorsing your book for 40 bucks, right. you know, and I'm not endorsing your book in the first place. So yeah. There's a few people that want me to like talk on their radio show, tell everyone how much you love our podcast. And uh, so I'm like, I don't know your podcast weird. And I don't want to do like thorough research yeah, for, to, for your cameo for my, you know, for the 30, bucks i end up with whatever um but it's really really now i charge less i oh. charge 25 it's well, just like eh, holiday it's discount it did you know i did a i did a what I, I did a pandemic no a social distancing special oh nice five dollars at the beginning of it oh wow i got so many that it was like i was anxious Wow, you're going to have so many footlongs. Yes, exactly. Just waiting for Subway to come back. Five dollar footlong. I can have all of them. <laughs> um, but, and so like now I'm charging, and then I went to 10, I went to 25. People are home and people, you know, yeah. I started getting those ones that were like, my friend was diagnosed with COVID and she could really use a pep talk. And, you know, a, a, a lot that were just like, it's really hard to be in lockdown and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And now the ones I'm getting that are like, can you wish them a Merry Christmas are a little bit funner, right. you know, but, um, so yeah, so th those are really fun. Yeah. Those are really fun. And I know I am expecting a large uh, influx for Martin Luther King day. Right. Of course. Yes. <laughs> That's probably no, but you know what? What? No, I don't think anybody's thinking of me like, what can I do for Martin Luther King's book LV? <laughs> Like certainly nobody's doing that, but Valentine's Day. Oh sure, is a time that I get some of those too. Yeah, so, and of... they're always so sweet. Yeah, and, you know, really sweet. And then, and if you're, you know, people are sending them to people that were fans, you know, that are '90s kids. Right, exactly. Which is and... such a trip now that '90s kids are like married and have kids. Right. That yeah. because that makes me so much older. I know it's really bad. <laughs> I hate aging. Oh but, my goodness! You know what you're gonna do. Um, so we are right before New Year's Eve. Yeah, this is uh, our last show of 2020. Oh my goodness! Wow, we made it. We <laughs> we made it through 2020. Oh, uh, not yet. It's the 30th. Uh, this is airing on the 30th. We have so close. We are so close. Uh, but actually, this is a really good segue because our first question of the day. If you're ready for some questions. Yeah. is about New Year's. So oh, okay. uh, let's uh, start some questions here and uh, we'll start with Allison. Allison is from Facebook and she's asking, uh, ask you uh, New Year's resolutions. 
Why do so many of us make them when the majority of us don't ever <laughs> uphold them? What is it about the end of the year that has us constantly looking to fix or improve ourselves? Is this a metaphor for how we eventually look back on life when we're near the end? Like, yeah, that was good, but I wish I could have done it this way or mm. that way or just a little better. Is this what we all do to ourselves? And if so, is it even worth it? What does this line of thinking do for us? Can we all acknowledge it's a damaging way of looking at ourselves in, a re in relation to the world and then commit to changing our thinking? And you see, I just did it again. Clearly, I need some help, LB. No. Uh, and that was from Allison. Allison, thank you, Allison, potato head. Um... Yeah, I don't think people know that. I rarely call people by their names. Oh, I often yeah. call them potato and bunny and kitten and button. So potato head is a term of endearment. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, this New Year's resolutions are a bitch. Obviously, it's like people at the at the heart of it. It's like, I want to be my best self. Right. You know, and I want to accomplish something this year. Right. And it's usually something that you hate yourself for right. that you haven't been able to stop doing yeah. and why you would be able to stop it from January 31st, uh, from December 31st to January 1st is like, who knows? Right. I'm sure there are people who have kept their things. Usually sure, though, sure. it's like, um, well, I'm going to quit smoking or I'm going to not work as much or, you know, these, these large, that's the other thing too. They're always usually big. large things. Yeah. Big ideas. Like setting yourself up for failure a yeah. lot of times. Big life changing events. Exactly. Exactly. Huge lifestyle changes, yeah. you know, it, it's, and, and maybe that's part of it is it would be better if you're like, um, like for me. Mm hmm Right now, my house is a bit of a mess. Okay. I, I talked about this, I think, in an earlier episode. So obviously, I have not made progress. <laughs> there are clothes everywhere. Sure. If that I like have to step on and around this and that. Sure, sure. If my New Year's resolution, I will make this my New Year's resolution. Okay, here we go. But get this. All right. To hang up one piece of clothing per day. How simple is that? It's pretty simple. So simple. And if I miss a day, I do two the next day. Two pieces of clothing. Of clothes, yeah. That's something that I that I I am capable of doing. Absolutely. You know, I am capable of doing sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. But to say like this is the year, you know, I've I I have a weight problem. I always have. It's you know, people know me as the fat girl. People like to make lovely, hateful comments about it as well. <laughs> yeah. So props to you. Stay classy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so that's always, you know, been a thing of yeah. like, I'm going to lose 100 pounds this year. I'm going to, you know, and, the, right. you know, the way we I'm sure we'll get into this later. And this is but the weight thing with a lot of people is very emotional. It's very, you know, trauma based, all that kind of stuff. But. So speaking of some trauma, I broke up about a year ago. A relationship ended. Right. That was. It was the whole thing was bad. Yeah. The whole thing it was, was rough. it was really it was rough. really rough. And it was it, it was just fucked up. Yeah. And it happened to be in mid December, and I had gone to visit a friend. Her uh, sister is a personal trainer. Mm. So I said, "Hey, you know, can I call Molly?" You know, you think I could do some sessions with her just because I was so deep into feeling shitty right. and acting out with food yeah. from the four years of the relationship right? that I was like, I want to get back to this. So I, I went over to her uh, to this. Her name is Molly. I don't I'm always like, don't say anyone's <laughs> name to Molly's house in Phoenix. And we did some sessions and it felt good and it was hard. Nice. And I could start to feel my body. I could start to feel my um, muscles and all that kind of stuff. Not like that they were big, but just like yeah, just... being connected to my body. Sure, sure, sure. And um, so I went back from there and I did some research and I found a gym at home mm. that I was interested in as a women's gym. Mm. But just the timing of it was like made me look like I was a New Year's resolutioner. Right. I got back just before New Year's. I went to the gym. Right. And I was like, 
I am not a New Year's resolutioner. <laughs> this was just bad circumstance. timing. Yeah. This was circumstance. And I even said that when I was signing up. I'm like, I just, I'm, I want you to know I'm not a New Year's resolution. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> and then that was really great. I was going to the gym four, five, six times a week. Right. Doing a lot of yoga classes, all this stuff. I really felt... Like I was going somewhere. I felt empowered, even mm. though that's a weird word to use. And then COVID hit. And then yeah. that was the most, that was the hardest thing for me as far as just being in lockdown. Yeah. Um, Cause that's not something you can really do the same at home. No, there's nothing I did at the gym. I couldn't do at home. I just don't. All right. There's, you know, a million yoga. You weren't using like a stair machine no. or a bike machine no, or a but treadmill. They, they or... have this thing called the street Oh, that I could walk on. Wow. Anytime I want. It's called outside. Oh, it's true. And, uh, yeah. you know, that hasn't happened. I've gone into what a lot of people have been like, you know, Ugh. look, I feel like new year's resolutions are, are about one thing. There is no time during the rest of the year that is a more apt time to just start, right? I feel like people yeah. have a hard time starting something. And New Year's is just that that one day out of the year where everyone has decided, let's just start something. It's the beginning. Let's start. And I feel like people just use that date as a place to, you know, they've been thinking about learning to juggle. And what better day to start learning yeah. <laughs> than January 1st? Like, I honestly feel like a majority of the resolutions out there are just people desperately searching for somebody to tell them to just go. Yeah. Right. They want somebody to say, go start, do it. And nobody's doing that. So when New Year's hits, they go, OK, well, this is a day I can start. Yeah. Right. And that's and that's good. I think like what what Allison is talking about, what we talked about in the beginning before I went on like a 20 minute rant about my gym, <laughs> which is still I mean, still it's good. all yeah, good. Yeah. But, um, you know, is the concept of saying of something that I feel bad about something right. that I'm like totally down on myself about right. maybe have bad self-talk and saying, I'm going to change this on January 1st. And then. When that doesn't happen, it's like continuing the cycle. So I really yeah. get what she's saying. Yeah. And maybe a way to to circumvent that pattern is to is for me to say, okay, here's my my New Year's Eve, you know, my New Year's Eve goal. My <laughs> New Year's resolution isn't to lose a hundred pounds by summer. It isn't to um, you know, get a job that makes a hundred thousand dollars. It's not to whatever. It's to hang one piece of clothing yeah. up in my closet per day. That is the best New Year's resolution I've heard. Yeah. It really is. It's so simple. It's easy to do. It's easy to to forgive yourself when you made a mistake and you forget once. Yeah. Right? That's another thing is that you you people start trying to lose weight or go to the gym or do these things. And then the day that it doesn't work or they miss the time or they forget it's like okay well that's it i i, I well this it year that. is shocked exactly yeah and exactly. then that resolution is dead and yeah that now i have something more to feel bad about for a very like <laughs> i'm like god okay there's 363 days till my next <laughs> new year's resolution exactly. and that's that's another thing too is that it's this finite all or nothing thing that's what i think allison's talking yeah. about it's like it's really hard to be all or nothing yeah. in anything you do. So, Allison, you're right. Everyone else is wrong. You are the queen of understanding things. Yes. And uh, to everyone else out there, I do agree with LB. I think you should all make very, very tiny, simple resolutions. Yeah. So much better. All right. Well, let's move on to question number two. Question okay. number two is from our website, which uh, you can all log on to our website, asklorybeth.com. That's and send us a question. Uh, like this COVID. One, exactly. Uh, this question is from Jason. And Jason has a very deep philosophical question here. He says, like all of modern society, I have a smartphone. Ooh. However, unlike most people, I hate the idea of putting a case on my phone. What should I do? I want to appreciate the beauty of my device, but I don't want to live in fear of dropping the thing. Help. Jason, 
while you were reading that, I kind of got this like weird vibe that Jason is in a relationship with his phone. <laughs> I like admiring its beauty. Yeah. Um, I have my smartphone. Yeah. I have uh, an unhealthy relationship with it. Yeah. I turned it off to to record this right. with you, Clark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I turned it off, I picked it up probably <laughs> seven times to try to look for something. Sure, sure. It's it's sad. It's like when your friend dies and you forget and right. you, you think, I gotta tell Oh Right. You're always putting your hand on that side of the bed. Well, yeah. oh, 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 wait a minute. So I uh, I understand. Uh Jason was Jason, it? Jason. Get a clear case, yeah. moron. Come on. This is such <laughs> oh, an easy question. No, no, no. I have. He needs a little uh, tough love. I do have an iPhone. It's that like periwinkle blue, which happens to be my favorite color. Yeah. Like this light sky periwinkle blue. I've got that one and I've got a case on him and it's a clear case so that I can see the lovely blue and the little apple. Right. And um, my phone is still protected. Yes. So I recommend to you looking up online, clear iPhone or clear whatever you have, clear Android case, whatever. Mine also has a kickstand. Sure, sure. So I can stand it up and watch, watch TV. I watch, I watch things constantly yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is my advice, Jason. Please, please keep your phone safe. Uh, uh, one, one more bit of advice here. Mm -hmm. Ready? Uh, you can spend some money and get an insurance policy for your phone. Oh. Then you're still spending a little money every month for the insurance policy. But hey, if it breaks, you get a new phone. Yes. Then you'd never need a case. Yes. There you go. There's that option as well. Yeah, but that I've always had to have a case because I'm just always when when I'm dealing with a phone without a case, I'm 100 percent sure it's going to just slip out of my hand into the gutter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like down the sewer drain, and then I'll be like trying to get it, and which then, it will do. Like yeah, uh, you know, no, it will. It's and then, going to And then to you break. have to deal with Pennywise, and then <laughs> right. it's a whole other thing. Exactly. Get a case, Jason, for the good of the nation. Yeah, come on. And get a clear case and yeah. you can enjoy the beauty and the protection that you feel. Exactly. That's good advice. All right. Uh, let's move on to our third question. Our third question is actually an audio question. This is oh. a question somebody phoned in uh, on our uh, amazing phone number, which is 1-855-DENBERG, 1-855-DENBERG. Uh, this is Lily. Let's say hi to Lily. Lily. Hi. My name is Lily. I have a situation I'm interested in. I'm talking to three men, but I like them all. And two I met, one I have not met. But I want to be with the one who makes me feel the best, like intimacy. I haven't had intimacy with any of them, but like kissing and touching and fooling around. So what should I do? Should I wait until we go there or should I just? Big one, which is hard. I'm in a dilemma. Can you help me? All right, oh, Lily. Lily. You know how I can't meet anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Lily's just got it going on. I but know. she doesn't have it going on because she's not intimately involved with these three guys. Right. Unless. Hasn't um, even met one. Well, first of all, thank you, Lily, for your question. Yeah, and that was for great, great, great. Opening up about that. Some people are really calling with some personal stuff, and I. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but unless you have had a conversation with any of these men about this is, you know, exclusive or are you seeing anyone else? Like, unless that kind of stuff has been talked about, right. you're not dating. You know, you specifically say you like you're talking to three three men, not that you're dating them. You've ma made it very clear that you're not having sex and that kind of stuff. So what you can do is just keep talking to them, keep yeah. getting to know them. Yeah. You know, if, if the one that makes, first of all, in any case, if it's available, you should be with the one who makes you feel the best. Right. You know, obviously. Absolutely. And, you know, as long as there's no official anything with any of them, 
you should be able to do that. You well, know? one thing that Lily doesn't talk about here is whether she's what her relationship is with these men right now. Is she going on dates with these men or is, are these three men just three men that she knows that she's fond of? I think she said that she's talking to them. She's she hasn't talking been intimate, to them, but she's met two of them. Right. And she hasn't met. I think she hasn't met the one that she likes most that right. makes her feel the best which actually is such a wonderful way to put that right. to not say oh he's the hottest one or he's the one i like best she said he's the one that makes me feel yeah the best yeah. and that is like awesome yeah that's what i that's a tip from lily that i need to stop and ponder when i'm doing anything right except for auditions where it's kind of their job to make me feel not the best (laughs) um but um i just thank you lily because i love that yeah be with the one that makes you feel the best absolutely and don't be afraid of uh this is this is uh uh, not i don't want to judge lily but lily does sound to be uh probably not a millennial Right. We're probably above millennial on Lily. Yeah. I I think it would be fine, Lily, if you want to kiss more than one man, if you want to test out the waters with one or two. I don't see any problem with that. Yeah. And and if they don't, I mean, you don't also have to go to everybody, you know, I'm not polyamorous, but I have kissed someone else. Right. You know, if things are casual, if things are fine, then, um, you know, take it as far as you're willing to take it. Continue. If you've, you know, are, are trying to pursue or get to pursue you, this one that makes you feel best. Yeah. And that starts to progress. Then naturally I think you would, you know, kind of beg off and, and be less available and less into spending time with or talking into, you know, the other guys. Yeah. But, you know, right now it kind of sounds like you're like, well, I really like this one guy, but I don't want to give up the other two that I still kind of like right? because I don't know. And the answer is you don't have to as long as there's no understanding that it's exclusive as long as that is not you actively breaking uh, confidence with somebody else or hurting someone else. Right. Don't hurt anybody else. Yeah. And and they could be, you know, they could be hurt or whatever, but it's not like we said we were dating each other and then you did this. So that is my advice. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Hey there. The holidays are here, so it's good to know Kroger can save you some time with free pickup on all your fresh favorites. Whether your traditions call for a hearty helping of juicy ham Ample apple pie, or Aunt Sue's legendary twice stuffed stuffing, Kroger has got you covered. So order for free pickup at Kroger.com or the app and get more time to get your holiday on when you grab your groceries curbside. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. Um, let's move on. We have a, a fourth final question for this section. Uh, this is actually from Instagram and this is, uh, from the desk of, uh, somebody very important, uh, silly goose of LA oh. and silly goose of LA, uh, asks, how do I not crash and burn in the early stages of the first few dates? A very apropos question. Now we were just kind of talking yes. about dating and meeting people. So, uh, how do you not crash and burn in the early stages of dating? Well, first I like that it's silly goose of LA, which leads me to think that there's like a large silly goose society (laughs) and that they all get together and they're just everything is represented i'm silly goose of boise i'm silly goose of rochester right it's like it's it's all it's like the international house of pancakes there's like everyone's there there's a swedish ambassador exactly so all the silly geese get together (laughs) at geese con 96 (laughs) why would it be 96 because it's it's steeped in history it's the 96 Sixth year, it's not from 1996. Oh yeah, no, it was. It was, I was the 96th year of GooseCon, is oh, what you're yes, saying. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I wasn't. But oh, that's a better explanation. It's a better explanation. <laughs> um, so how do I not crash and burn in the first few dates? Be yourself. No, I'm <laughs> barfing at that statement, but it's kind of true. Yeah. My something that I do, and I know chicks do i don't know if guys do it you can speak to that is to like super super future trip as soon as i kind of like a guy i'm imagining what we're gonna get married sure you know where we're gonna get married what our first dance is gonna be to right all this kind of stuff you know and and by the time i'm done 
you know, we've gotten married, had kids, gotten divorced, and are still friends by the time we've gone <laughs> right. on a second date. Right, right. And you're figuring out who's going to get the car. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, who gets these China plates? And I'm like, <laughs> I can't remember in real life, I can't remember your last name. <laughs> So I always need to keep myself in check and not get lost in this fantasy of the future. Right. Because I don't even know this person yet. Right, right. You know? Absolutely. And it's hard to negotiate, you know, do I tell him how much I like him? Do I, you know, do I just kind of play it cool in case they don't like me? And the answer is... You're getting to know someone. Yeah. You're getting to know someone in the early few dates. Do we get along? Do we, you know, have anything to talk about? Right. That kind of stuff. Right. And you could really look at it like, like that. Yeah. Like, like if we, um, Oh, we got to talk about Logan soon. Oh, yeah. Logan Clark's best friend. But like, because he and I used to be partners in science class. Right. Yeah. Which was a whole hilarious thing. But stay tuned. Yeah. For the talk about Logan. Coming soon. Coming soon on Bad Advice. <laughs> um, the uh, think of it almost like, you know, you're doing a group project. Right. And you do this group project and you find people that you get along with and that you work well with. Right. And that can be the first thing. You know, the difference between that and a date is the date is like, are we going to have sex? Are right. we going to have sex? Are we going to have sex? What kind of sex? Right. Will it be my hand, my mouth, or my <laughs> other regions? You know, and that's obviously a, a big component right. of not having the sex. That doesn't have to be any component, but no. that, that thinking and the anticipation and right. the, are we, you know, that's such a big part of starting relationships. Very true. So it's easy to get lost in that too. But if you just really are able to focus on getting to know someone and the yeah. other thing is to be honest. Yeah. 92% of the things we worry about would be alleviated if we were honest. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you were to just say, I'm, you know, I really like you and I'm, and I, I want to get to know you yes. and I don't want to screw it up by doing X, Y, or Z and not in a like heartfelt, like we need to have this serious talk. Being open and communicative is never the wrong answer. Yeah, It's and, always the good way to go. And what you're going to find is either, oh, I was feeling the same way too. And oh, this is good. The pressure's off. You know, taking the, popping the balloon of the anxiety that you're yes. feeling. Or or you get the exact opposite, but just still the perfect answer. Even if I come, if I'm asking you, oh, I want to talk about Star Wars and nerdy stuff. And you uh, tell me like, hey, you know what? I, I really am not into pop culture, or sci-fi or nerdy stuff. That's a sign to me that, hey, I shouldn't be in this relationship. Yeah, exactly. So, so whether it's a good, you get the good, Good response or the bad response, you're still getting the response you need. Yeah. And even worse is me going, shut your filthy mouth about Star Wars. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, that that then I'm turning back around. Uh that's yeah. that's kind of good again. No, yeah, exactly. Uh but yeah, so uh first uh first few dates are always really tough, but uh yeah, hopefully those that advice helps. Yeah, and take uh, a breath. Yeah, take a breath. Every everyone deals with it and and you'll get through it, I promise. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we're good with those questions. Let's move on to a, an old flashback story. You ready for a flashback, LB? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go flashback a little bit. Okay. Flashing back with Clark and LB. Let's talk about some fun memory. Because it's a flashback. So pretty. That's very nice. That's a very pretty jingle. I like that jingle. All right. Well, uh, so we're uh, we're going back to flashback for this episode. And for this episode, we thought we would talk about a place that was very near and dear to both of our hearts growing up our entire lives. We've kind of constantly gone back to one place. And that one place, oddly enough, 
is the Hollywood Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl. So we want to kind of give you a little bit of a flashback, maybe a couple stories about how our lives keep intertwining with the Hollywood Bowl. So I'll explain the Hollywood Bowl, which is my favorite place. It's where I spend my summers. Every summer. Uh, Every summer. It is a large... um, Primarily ish a music venue. Yeah, it's outdoor in, stadium. It's in Hollywood. Right. And it's an open air, um, like the it kind of like the Sydney Opera House, but right. huger. Right. There's like a dome stage or the bowl and benches and seats. It seats 18,000 people. Yep. Which is a lot of people to spend the evening with. Yep. And I love doing it. Tucked away in the Hollywood Hills. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's right. If you're sitting in the right section, you can kind of see the Hollywood sign from the audience. Um, And it's been around for, God, a hundred years or so. uh, You know what? I was going to say since the 20s. And that's crazy that it would be almost about 100 years. years. Yeah. Um, And it's uh, kind of in the middle of everything, and it's a go-to place for some of the biggest uh, shows and some of the coolest and and more unique shows in L.A. There are are times when it's like... The Dave Matthews Band. Sure. I don't know why that's the. I mean, I guess because we're always focused on the '90s. Right, that's yeah. the greatest. But you know, the Dave Matthews Band, or you know, Keith Richards and the Rolling Stones, and big, big, you know, shows. Right. But the there also is more of the smaller shows with the what the L.A. Philharmonic Orchestra. Right is called the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra during the summer at the Hollywood Bowl. So there's tons that are just um, classical music. There are plays, there are individual singers, there's theme nights, and most... Yo-Yo Ma. I saw Yo-Yo Ma. Yeah, he's great. Most smushy to me, though, is they have fireworks. Yes. There are... Several shows, it's not every night, but at several times during the summer, they have shows that have fireworks. Yeah. And I love fireworks. Yeah, so yeah. it's where I would go. I would go to every show if I could. Well, I should explain that. Um, well, Clark, you worked there yeah, back so, in the day, right? So the the summer at that I graduated high school, which was 95, uh, I uh, worked with Logan, my best friend. He and I both worked at the Hollywood Bowl. We had those, uh, they have these little carts. Like, you know how you go to the mall, and in the middle of the mall, there's those little carts. Little kiosks. Little kind kiosks, of thing. and they sell random things. We had kiosks at three or four locations around the bowl uh, to sell Hollywood Bowl merchandise. Mm. Uh, so we did that for a whole summer. We I heard every single concert that so year. Cool. It was really fun. We got in trouble a lot. <laughs> uh, I would see you there when yeah, I would come to shows. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you'd probably see uh, Logan first because Logan had the prime location. Yeah. He was right over there by the K entrance. So it was like everyone passed by him no matter where your seat was. I was actually tucked away on the rich side. Ooh. I was over at the West Gate where all of the fancy rich people and celebrities come in. Oh. So I got a lot of high money, high roller clients coming to my booth. Um, but it was really fun. It was amazing to be able to listen to these um, spectacular concerts every mm-hmm. night. One of the nights I, uh, I even, uh, I, I was John Williams and I was walking back behind stage and I kind of ran into John Williams. Oh. It was really kind of cool. Very fun. <clears throat> and then one night, uh, Logan and I finished, uh, counting our totals for everything. And he finished first and he came over to my side mm-hmm. and then I finished mine and we grabbed our stuff, locked down my cart and we're walking back across the bowl. And now the entire stadium is empty. Yeah. The bowl is empty. Yeah. Nobody's there anymore. Cause you know, everyone's d- gone for the night. So we ran up on stage. <sighs> And we sang a Beatles song because we wanted to say (laughs) that at one point we sang at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, that's wonderful. That is one of the coolest things is um, part of So I go as often as I can during the summer, which means I get the schedule for the Hollywood Bowl and I make a list of every single show that I want to see. And then I look at my bank account (laughs) and depending on where I've been the year previously, 
I either buy one ticket to, I mean, a ticket, also a ticket of the Hollywood Bowl can be four hundred dollars right. or. $200 or $54 or $17 or $8. Right. Because it's like this huge thing. The farther back you get, obviously, the cheaper the tickets get for yeah. some things. So depending on where I am financially, I can either buy three different shows for $8 or I can buy 10 shows for $17 or $25. The one year I really went to too many was... You know, and I always post on Facebook, like, checking in at the yeah, Hollywood Bowl, my yeah. favorite place. But there was one year that I was like, going back to the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> like, I would have booked you were, uh, yeah. It was your job. Like, you were yeah. kind of sick of it at that Gotta point. Got to get to this. Well, there was a few times, and I didn't realize it, where, like, I had a Saturday night show uh -huh. and a Sunday night show. Uh -huh. I'd be like, here I go again. <laughs> um, but it is, it is my most favorite place. And one of the things that you know, COVID yeah. and the pandemic and being safe and being better Kinda safer than sorry. Yeah. You. This was the first, the first summer, I'm sure for thousands yeah. and thousands of people yeah. that, you know, the hall and, and luckily the Hollywood Bowl just closed. Yeah, exactly. You know, it wasn't like, well, we'll sell every other seat. Like every yeah. other seat is 9,000 people. You know right. what I mean? So exactly. luckily, luckily and shittily, they just stopped everything, canceled everything. Some yeah. about um, it. And I, I really... got to see some other fireworks. I went somewhere where they're shooting off fireworks and Ooh. I just sat in my car, um, which I'm not... Uh, Suggesting you do because they also did start a fire. Right, of course. They started a fire and burned down an eight unit oh. uh, apartment building. Fantastic. Yeah, it was a thing. Oh, that was awesome. It was a thing. And, um, but not being at the Hollywood Bowl, having such a good reason yeah. that it's canceled. If it was just, I really don't have any money yeah. or I broke both my legs or something, <laughs> right. that would be really sad. Yeah. But, um, so then our stories converge. Yes. So the, the, the peak of our Hollywood Bowl, uh, love was, uh, was hit. Was, was it two years ago or Three years was ago. Was he two or three? He might he must have, been have been three. three. Yeah. So probably two years ago. So probably 2018. Yeah. They had a concert at the bowl that was the. the Muppets take the bowl. Muppets take the bowl. Was that it? Yeah. That okay. was totally it. And they had the the Muppet performers there yeah. performing with the Muppets songs skits and real people too and it yeah, was the, it was the season it was the season finale it was the last show yes. of the season so there were more fireworks, fireworks. Yeah. It, and and my oh. son was 3 years old and he was just then kind of slowly phasing out of sesame street mm -hmm. and i was showing him more Muppet show, you yeah. know, he was watching a little bit more Mana Mana and a little bit less uh, somebody Abka come and play with me. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should just have an entire episode where we try and remember <laughs> shit from Sesame Street. Um, but yeah, that was the best. She had the time of his life, that show. Well, it, but the thing is, it wasn't just a show because we expert tip number one if you're in LA there are shuttles that will take you to the Hollywood yes, Bowl never park, park at the bowl yeah you park for free at a lot of them and then you uh, take a shuttle that costs like six or seven bucks right. and it takes you right to the front and right to the back so we had met nearest your house yeah and it was you, Lex, and Karen, your wife, Mimi and Papa. That's right. And me. Yes. I didn't have a date. Well, I guess Lex was my date. <laughs> yeah, Lex was your date. To, to even out the numbers. Exactly. Um, and so even on the way there in the bus, we were sitting in the back of the bus and Karen was like, this is the first time he's been in a vehicle yeah. that he hasn't been in a chair. It's the first time he's been able to look out the window. Yeah. Cause and of course gets, we were, when you're that young, you have to get strapped in yeah. so much to a car seat. And we were of course, you know, all on I was sitting on one side of him. Karen was sitting on the other. It's not like we were like, look out the window. And good luck. <laughs> so that was even I mean, amazing to me to see like, this is a first for him. This is a first being on a bus. Yeah. This is a first, you know, his first time to the Hollywood Bowl. And we all sat together and, you know, the uh, Clark and I love the Muppets. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, if you if you aren't a Muppet person, <laughs> that's okay. But if you think it's just goofy and for kids, go back and watch them. Yeah. They are, um, I almost said sadistic. But <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not sadistic. They are satirical. Yeah. They are ironic. They are. Jim Henson was so far ahead of his time. Yeah. He, he really was a, just a genius at storytelling. Yeah. And we love the Muppets. Yeah. So the, you know, smush together the Muppets and the, bowl. and the bowl. You got Muppets in my Hollywood bowl. Exactly. You got Hollywood bowl in my Muppets. It was a true mm. peanut butter goodness. Exactly. So exactly there. Right? I did it already. Exactly. Say exactly. Um, so that was, that's just a really special memory of yeah. the bowl taking Lex to his first one. And he just was so into it. It wasn't like other kids that they're like, <laughs> Yeah, he loved it. Yeah, he, was he getting... just loved it. Plus the fireworks. And yeah. It was just the bestest time. So Hollywood bowl. bowl, if you're listening. We miss you. Not people that live there, that no. work there, the yeah. actual bowl. Well, I, I do want to say uh, to the guy that's uh, outside of the bowl with the dog puppet that sings, <laughs> oh, I miss you too, dude. Yes. I miss you too. A and lot. at one point I knew your name, but I don't now. I know. Okay. Well, so, are you good with the Hollywood Bowl? You have any more Hollywood Bowl memories? I'm always good with the Hollywood Bowl. All no, right. just that I hope, I hope that it's safe. Yeah. To, I mean, hope, asking that it be safe again to open next summer, it might be not realistic. Yeah. But um, I'm hoping to be able to go back we, someday. Yeah. When we it's miss safe. It. Absolutely. But uh, with that uh, wrapped up, we got uh, through our flashback. Now let's go to our final question. It's also from Facebook, and this is from somebody named Greg. Oh. Greg asks, hey, LB, mm -hmm. how do you negotiate the holidays with family if family members are abusing alcohol and or drugs? Ah, shapa, shapa, sha. Thank you, Greg. What's interesting to me is that Greg used the word abusing. Yes. You know, he yeah. didn't say, what do I do if Using. there's alcohol and yeah. drugs there? Um, and so to say that makes it seem like it's pretty dire. The obvious answer. Did I say obvious? I think you said obvious. The obvious. <laughs> the obvious answer is don't go. Right. The obvious answer is don't put yourself in a situation that A, you might feel uncomfortable with. Right. B, you might just have a bad time if everybody else is fucked up. Yeah. Or C, you know, if you're not using, mm -hmm. um, which is a whole other thing, you know, and you feel like, oh, no, this could be a problem for me. It could be a dangerous place then you don't have to go. Right. So that's one piece of it. If you're sober, there's a whole protection that you need to give yourself. And if you do want to go, that could mean, you know, setting a limit and saying, I'm going to be there from eight to eight 45 right. because nine to 10 to 11 is when the, the big, you know, the big drinks come out right. and the, you know, all the everything and say, I'm going to be there from eight to nine or take someone with you that yeah. can support you and is a safe person. Um, and those are things to do or don't go. Those or don't are th go. Things to do if you are, you know, sober. Right. If it's just a matter of. Yeah, does Greg say he's sober or no? No, he just says, how do you negotiate the holidays with family if family members are abusing? Th that's what I thought. So, you know, those are some things to do that we already talked about if you're sober. Yeah. If it's just a matter of, Jesus Christ, my family's out of control. Right. You know. Which could very well be the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, um, you know, A, you could not go. Yeah. B, you could talk to somebody beforehand right. and say, you know, uh, this always happens and I feel really uncomfortable with it. Right. You know, or use them against each other. You know, Aunt Patricia really seems like she has a drinking problem. What do you think? Right. Like, yeah, she's a mess. Yeah. But then talk to Patricia about Stanley. Yeah. You see? Know, what, if they're going to be fucked up anyway, have some fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Cause chaos. Oh, yes. I love that answer. <laughs> if, if your family members are abusing alcohol or drugs and it's up 
upsetting you cause chaos. That, yes. Just, and not not deadly chaos. I'm not saying hand everyone keys and tell them to go race outside. No. But, you know, tell them that, uh, you know, the Aunt Petunia is uh, pissed off because, you know, you're saying that she's... Her cooking is horrible. I yeah. don't know. Send them yeah, off yeah, against yeah. each other. Poke the bears. Yeah. And then let the event turn into a sort of cage match. Exactly. Whoever's left standing gets the last beer. Which also would work if you're bringing someone. Because then you have somebody to watch the chaos yes. with. Yes. You can sit there and watch the world burn around you. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I got 10 on Aunt Patricia. <laughs> And he's like, no, Stanley's coming in hot. Stanley's got some fire. But, uh, you know, the main answer is you don't have to go. You don't have to go anywhere you're uncomfortable with. And if someone's going to say, you didn't come to blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, yeah, you're all fucking crazy and drunk and high. Right. So that is, you know. Th that is absolutely your choice to not put yourself in a uncomfortable, unfun. I can tell you though, because uncomfortable and dangerous, that's all that stuff. Yeah, right. But uh, being sober, I can tell you, it's just not fun to be yeah. with a bunch of people that are drinking. No, sometimes. Sometimes. You know. Right. Because it's like, I can be with somebody who's going to smoke pot and then it's like all of a sudden they're like, Ew, you know, they're not fun to be around anymore. Yeah, they're not fun to be around anymore. And I mean, it might be to other, you know, sure. drunk or high people. Sure, but sure. If it's, you know, it's not fun to be there, then it's not fun to be there. Yeah. Which also might be good. But if there is good cooking, bring a friend or two and then you can just eat. Yeah. Um, there you go. So, yeah, there's a lot you can do as long as, you know, the end result. You know, please protect yourself yeah. in whatever state you're in. Right. And and don't uh don't send anyone to their death. That that would be the other advice. No. Yeah. Uh but in the immortal words of uh John Bon Jovi, uh, it's my life. Oh. So you got to do what's right for you, dude. Exactly. 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 Uh, I don't think I've done too many exactly's, but we'll we'll go back and count. Indubitably. Please write in how many exactly. If somebody can hey, go back yeah, an and exactly count tally. an exactly tally of. Just make sure that you're exactly right. Oh. Don't be off by one or two. I don't want a round number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but that was it. That was our last question of the day. Oh, the end, the end. That was it. The, we are done with 2020. Oh my goodness. Everybody, please have a happy and oh, most of all, a safe yes. new year. Yes. Have a smart and safe, safe new, new year. year. Absolutely. You Stay can home. each get your own bottle of champagne yep. and clink the computer lightly with your <laughs> friends on the other side at midnight. Exactly. Please be safe, be smart, be kind. Yes. And thank you so much for sending in your questions. We really do love all yeah. of these questions. You guys are sending us fantastic questions lately. Uh, if you have any questions for Lori Beth, please send it to us at asklorybeth.com. You can hit us up on all the social at ask Lori Beth uh, at ask Lori Beth or you could just leave a message with your name and where you're from at 1855 Denberg that's 1855 denberg or I'll do give it to you in numbers it's 1855 336 2374 so Ooh. easy call send us a message we'd love to hear from you Yes. Anything else LB I just want to say thanks for listening congratulations to everyone who has made it through 2020, yeah. this has been a bitch and a half on about 7 million levels. Yeah. So. Congratulations to everyone who survived. Yes. And you please did it. have a happy new year and choose a doable resolution if you have to. Yeah. Uh, that's good advice. Good advice. Right, little, little tiny resolution. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next year. Woo! That Advice stars Lori Beth Denberg and Clark Crozier. The show is produced by me, Jeremy Balin, and part of the Seltzer Kings Network. Our theme song is written and performed by Natty Ward. If you or someone you love is in need of some bad advice, you can submit your own question on our socials, all of which are Ask Lori Beth, or on our website at AskLoriBeth.com, or for a nostalgic twist, you can call 1-855-DENBERG. That's right, 1-855-336-2374, and leave your question question there. Thanks for listening.